program, and I have the pleasure of serving as the moderator for this evening's event, our specialty program town hall. You'll notice that we do have simultaneous Spanish interpretation for those who need it during the forum, and the phone number is located on this opening slide, 508-924-5150. So we are excited to be with you this evening to provide an overview of all the resources and support that will be available to students who are enrolled in our session as we begin the school year in a fully virtual format. So during the time that we have with you all this evening, we're going to give you that overview of how we'll be supporting students in a virtual during using virtual instruction um, during the 2020-2021 school year in our specialty program. Um, each program that's represented here this evening is going to provide information on the student support and the available resources. And after each program is presenting their information, um, you'll see, you'll notice that there's a question and answer box. Um, in the form where you are, whether you're uh, reaching us by phone, if you're on your phone or out here on Twitter, and you can enter your question there, and there are supervisors and directors that will be responding to your questions. So the programs that we have represented this evening are listed on this slide, and this is the order of the presentation this evening. So from our Talented and Gifted Center programs, we have Ms. Teresa Jackson. Our Montessori program, we have uh, Ms. Lakeisha Ratliff and Dr. Gladys Whitehead. Immersion uh, will be Ms. Carmen Henninger. Creative and Performing Arts, and we have Lee Gibbs, who will be sharing information. And for both our International Baccalaureate program and Advanced Placement, uh, Ms. Adrika Hall will be giving us some updates there. For dual enrollment, we have uh, Olivia Pearson who will be sharing information. Uh, for our aerospace and engineering program and science and technology, we have Felicia Martin Latif. Uh, and for our career and technical education program, uh, we have Dr. Jean Paul Cadet who will be sharing information with you all tonight. All right, so we're going to get started with our K-8 programs for this evening. And we'll begin with our Talented and Gifted program. Good evening and thank you. The Talented and Gifted uh, Tag Center programs during uh, distance learning will be fully implemented. We are planning on utilizing all the resources that the content area departments, including the World Language Department, has secured in the past several months. Uh, some of these resources include Nearpod, uh, Pear Deck, Mango Learning, Dreambox, iReady, and Newzilla. Our tech teachers will take all of these resources and many more to differentiate, accelerate, and uh, enrich the curriculum. <laughs> They will uh, apply all of the strategies, the best practices in gifted education using these new resources in the virtual learning space to differentiate that instruction. One of the, the big strategies that will be utilized will be pre-assessment, which is critical for us to find out what our students know in order to teach them what they, they don't know. Um, in addition to that, enrichment programs will continue. They will continue virtually. These will vary from uh, school to school based on uh, interest. Uh, all of our students will meet with their teachers directly um, in real time. They will have access to pre-recorded lessons so they can review that. Our teachers and coordinators will be offering office hours so that our students can contact them for questions. The parents can contact with questions about assignments, grading, et cetera. We will still be providing additional professional development for teachers and coordinators throughout the year. Our twice exceptional learners 
will receive direct virtual support um, as identified in their IEPs and 504 plans. At our TAG centers, our TAG center coordinators will continue to offer the biweekly forums. This will be done virtually with support of the professional school counselors and the special educators. At the middle school level, our um, middle school twice exceptional learners will have access to the academic resource course. And if they are registered for that course, they will receive direct services there. But in addition, uh, they will receive services from their content area teachers, as well as the special educator at the school. This is an overview. If you have any questions um, at the end of the night, if they do not get answered, um, please feel free to contact the TAG Center coordinators or the TAG office, and we will be happy to address any questions or concerns that may come up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teresa. And also know that these slides will be posted um, and this entire presentation will be posted as well for you all to get this information. And we'll move on to Montessori. Good evening. Prince George's County Public School has one Montessori program in three locations. John Hansen, Judith P. Hoyer, and Robert Goddard Montessori Schools. This year, students will participate in a full distant learning model inclusive of a three-hour work schedule, work cycle rather, which includes virtual whole class instruction, whole class sharing, community meetings, small group instruction, and time for individual mastery of skills. Incoming three-year-old students will have the opportunity to observe class prior to becoming active participants and will transition into the program by the end of September. Each primary and lower elementary student will receive a Montessori materials packet that resembles the materials found in a physical classroom and a customized school box to meet the unique needs of the child at the primary and lower elementary level. Upper elementary students will have access to virtual Montessori resources and will receive a customized school box with essential supplies for their level of instruction. Middle school teachers will follow the model for their content areas and infuse Montessori strategies for instruction. Thank you. So we'll move on to our immersion programs to hear about the resources that will be available for those students. Bonjour. Hola. Ni hao. Hi, my name is Carmen Henninger, and we're excited to begin this school year. We have expanded this year, and we are now in 10 schools with three languages. For virtual learning, students will meet live to receive language arts instruction. Professional development will be provided to help teachers ensure that students will have daily opportunities in all three modes of communication. Small group instruction will be provided at at least three days a week in our K-5 programs. Literacy intervention, teachers are provided to K-5 schools who teach French or Spanish language arts to assist struggling readers with an emphasis on K-2 levels with language acquisition. The Emergent Office is providing new adaptive software for K-2 Spanish immersion students called Imagine Learning Espanol and for K-1 French immersion students called LALILO, in addition to our other online resources that are provided by our office, our schools, and the district. These two programs will provide students with phonics and comprehension practice. In addition, our office, in conjunction with the immersion principals and coordinators, have prepared a distance learning document 
which will be shared by schools for teacher and family support. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from our creating a creative and performing arts officer about the supports available to um, these students. Good evening. My name is Lee Gibbs. I am the officer for creative and performing arts and uh, regarding our creative and performing arts programs. We have three uh, programs for our creative and performing arts academies. That's the Benjamin Floyd creative and performing arts academy. Hyattsville middle school, as well as Thomas G. Pullen creative and performing arts academy. Our students will meet with their teachers virtually in real time to receive direct instruction. Uh, they will also have access to pre recorded and recorded lessons for small group and independent assignments. Uh, students and teachers will have online textbooks and resources. And it's imperative or it's important that we let you know that, of course, grades K through five CPA students or creative and performing arts students should have a different fine art in their schedule every day. Students in grades three through five who have signed up for instrumental music will have a half hour block for instrumental music pullout at least once per week. Uh, grades six through eight creative and performing arts students will see their major classes. And of course, the major is the art form auditioned for as well as the one that was accepted into at least twice per week. Virtual exhibits, performances and festivals may take place. Uh, the focus will be on individual and small group instruction. However, we will utilize a lot of different uh, platforms and capabilities such as Smart Music, Quaver Music, Final Cut Pro, of course, a lot of Google Classroom for one on one sessions for our for our lessons and Flipgrid and other resources. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And our final K-8 program that we'll be sharing information about um, is our IB program. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual town hall. My name is Edrika Hall, and I do um, support the IB program. And so for our K-8 programs, um, for our middle years program and our primary years program that um, are at Melwood, Dwight Eisenhower, James Madison, and Maya Angelou, our students there will continue to receive instruction um, in their regular classes virtually using one of the platforms like Zoom, Google Meets, or Microsoft Teams. So they will continue to receive um, their regular instruction as they always have. However, we will be working with the coordinators and the teachers at the school to provide supports for students based on any specific programmatic requirements, such as our fifth graders have to do an exhibition project. So we will be working with the coordinator and the teachers there to make sure that students have the those virtual supports um, and teachers and the coordinator will have office hours that parents and students will be able to access them for questions and support that they need. We will also support our middle school students um, through Turnitin, which is an online platform that allows students to submit writing assignments that they have to complete and teachers can give them feedback. And it also helps to support um, the, ac the academic integrity of the IB program because um, the Turnitin platform does um, scan papers for plagiarism. So we will continue to support students in building that academic integrity. We will also continue to work with teachers to ensure that their lessons are still built in the foundation of IB, the philosophy philosophy of IB by using those approaches to learning skills and those approaches to teaching um, methods in their classroom. So those are some of the ways that we will be supporting them from a programmatic, but those students still will be in their classes um, receiving their instruction from their teachers on a regular basis through those virtual platforms. Thank you, Rika. And um, we're going to continue with you when we move into our high school program. Um, but I just want to address a few of the things that are in our question and answer. And our team is working hard to respond to your questions. Um, but I know there have been some general questions about picking up laptops and picking up materials. And so schools will be communicating that information to parents um, through their robocalls and their website um, with regards to the date for a specific pickup. Um, so you'll hear, you'll definitely hear more information uh, at the school level about those pickup dates and um, the materials. Uh, there was one question, um, Lakeisha, regarding Montessori that for the good of the group um, about the materials, will parents receive 
training on how to use those materials with their children at home? Yes, got it by the teacher. They will have the children, um, they will instruct the children as well as the parents based on the level of how they would utilize those materials as well as storage, the same way they would do in the regular classroom. Thank you. Um, there were also um, questions about um, our TAG program. And so while all of our schools provide some level of TAG support at the KA levels, um, Ms. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't read the name here, but I know Teresa spoke about the um, TAG program, the center program. And so there are, there's also TAG in the regular classroom and TAG pullout. And as you all probably know, our TAG program begins in grade two um, after students have been identified as TAG. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. So we will move on to our high school program. And we, Adrika will pick us up there with our um, advanced placement. All right, hello again, everybody. Adrika Hall here. I also do support the advanced placement program. And so for this year, um, last year, the College Board launched a new online platform, a virtual platform for students and teachers called My AP and AP Classroom. And so this year is going to be very important for students to make sure that they join their AP Classroom when they start school because teachers will be using that platform to um, provide virtual um, support to students with um, questions and assignments that they will be assigning um, to the, to the students through that virtual platform. So students will receive um, instruction, virtual instruction through um, Zoom or Google Meet or Microsoft Teams from their AP teacher, but they will also be receiving um, assignments and activities through AP Classroom. So that is going to be a very key resource for students this year. Also, students will um, be, a, be able to still access the YouTube channel that the Advanced Placement Program set up at the end of last year to support students in preparation for the exam. So those live classrooms will still, live classroom assign, um, activities and lessons will still be available to students going into this year. So students will be involved in some asynchronous and synchronous learning. The synchronous learning will take place during their virtual live class sessions with their teachers where they will um, receive instruction. They will also do some activities in AP Classroom and then the asynchronous will be done by teachers assigning them some videos to watch and then also giving them some follow-up questions based on the video. So please just know that um, reminding your students that when they get that join code to join their AP Classroom that they do join their AP Classroom because that is going to be a very key resource for them this year. Thank you, Adrika, for those updates. And I, I see a few questions in the chat for you, so um, I will let you get to that. Yes. Uh, and just for our presenters, so you know we are in good time, so we um, have time for all of the questions that are here, and um, we have our interpreters on the line as well who are translating what you say. So if we could just slow down just a bit so that they can um, be able to catch that information. All right, and we're going to move on to our dual enrollment um, program. So we have many students across the district who are enrolled in high school and college classes in schools around um, the, the state. And so I'll turn it over to Olivia Pearson. Good evening. Um, we do have students, of course, enrolled in dual enrollment. Uh, we have MOUs with two organizations, Prince George's Community College and Bowie State University. We have students participating in both uh, institutions in two formats. So synchronous, which is live instruction with their um, instructor via a format such as Zoom or Blackboard Connect. We also have asynchronous or online courses for our students. And both colleges have student have resources such as virtual tutoring, writing centers, and math assistance to support our students if they um, run into trouble. We also have at um, most of our traditional high schools a partnership with Prince George's Community College, where coast advisors um, are stationed at the schools to also 
follow up virtually with students on their courses to make sure that they don't have any questions with logging in or communicating with their professors. Next slide, please. Our 3D Scholars Program is housed at Charles Herbert Flowers High School, and we have several virtual supports for our students. So in grades nine and 10, students will have um, their courses virtually with their PGCPS teachers. They also will participate in workshops and check-ins with their PGCPS counselor and 3D Scholars Program coordinator. In grades 11 and 12, students spend a half day with their high school courses and the rest of the time they will be participating virtually with dual enrollment and they will be following their degree maps in specific areas. We have three, cybersecurity, business, and criminal justice. Students receive check-ins also with their program coordinators virtually, and they are assigned a 3D Scholars Advisor at Prince George's Community College. These students also will be participating with virtual sessions versus both synchronous and asynchronous. Thank you, Olivia. Um, just some of the questions that have come up, just to reiterate, uh, the district will be handing out both laptops and devices, um, depending on students' uh, grade level, if they get a laptop or device uh, tablet. And so that information will be forthcoming from the schools on the dates um, to pick that information up. And um, this evening session is focused on our virtual, what our virtual instruction will look like for the fall for students in our, currently in our specialty programs. But I do see some questions about the process for next year. And we are in the planning stages of looking at what the criteria will be for um, various programs that may have previously had assessments. Um, so stay tuned to our website for updates uh, in that area. We're going to move on to our aerospace and engineering program with Dr. Uh, Felicia Martin Latif. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, our aerospace engineering and aviation technology program is housed at Duval High School, and we are working with the staff at Duval to um, develop and find additional resources to assist us um, in this all virtual environment. One of the things that we will be doing is um, students will be meeting with their teachers virtually real time, and they will also have access to recorded um, sessions and lessons for review. We are working with our partners to create not only a peer-to-peer -peer, um, tutoring um, type of model, but also um, college student-to-peer tutoring type model to help those students and to have someone that they can talk to uh, as they won't be um, in the school building on a consistent basis. In addition, we will be creating a newsletter um, that has many monthly challenges in it for the students to participate in so that they can get um, real-time engineering design process and um, scientific method process uh, practice um, while they're still with us. Another thing that we're trying to innovate um, specifically for our students and in internship, our mentors, um, many of our mentors have already agreed to um, basically vlog or walk around um, recording their day and sharing that with students such that the students can still have some um, tangible experience in um, the career of STEM with the mentors that they're being placed with. In addition, we are working really hard to change our internships, seeing as it must be virtual this year, such that the students do meet the objectives of um, career experience um, that we want from that particular course. In addition, uh, we have software um, that we have to transition to such that all our kids have Chromebooks. So we are approving the use of Onshape in place of SolidWorks specifically for AEAC as they use um, SolidWorks in many of the engineering curriculum courses. And lastly, our teachers will be holding office hours for feedback and next steps um, as it um, pertains to next courses and um, college planning for our students. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Um, so we, we heard from 
Edrica Hall with regards to IB at the K-8 level, but we also have an IB program at the high school level. And so she's gonna provide us with some updates on what IB looks like in a virtual environment at the high school level. Edrika, if you're speaking, you're on mute. And I don't know if maybe she's having some technical difficulties because as you all know, it's storming all across our area. So I will jump in. Um, and if Edrika, you are in, please um, take over at any point. Uh, but we do have the IB program at several of our high schools, the Central, Crossland, Frederick Douglass, Laurel, Parkdale, and Suitland. Um, similar to the K-8 program, we'll be utilizing Turnitin and Manage Back, the platform, so we can continue to support our students uh, with their writing, and they can provide direct feedback uh, from their teachers. They're going to be able to participate um, in the MYP personal project. And so there will be office hours with teachers to be able to work on that program throughout the school year. Um, and so, and also many of their independent practice time throughout the day will be utilized throughout the school year and this first semester will be utilized to work on that uh, personal project. And so as with all of our programs, uh, this school year instruction is going to be, there's going to be more live instruction and the, the virtual support uh, will be provided using either Google Meet, Zoom, or Microsoft Teams so that there's an opportunity to connect directly with teachers and re receive that live instruction. In addition to that, we want to make sure we use that live instruction time in the IB program to really provide individualized support to students as much as possible. So in some cases, there'll be recorded videos that are sent out to students ahead of time so that the time spent live with the teacher is rich discussion with both the teacher and amongst students themselves. Good evening. Dr. McDaniel, can you let Ms. Hall discuss about PSAT? Because we have a few questions about that. Hi, yes, I'm back. I apologize for that as I lost the connectivity for a moment. Um, so right now we are still working on what the PSAT would look like this year. Um, given that we are in a virtual environment, we are uncertain if we will be able to offer the PSAT to our eighth graders. So the Specialty Programs Committee is working on some other options for Specialty Programs entrance um, for the eligibility criteria based on that. So I just encourage parents to continue checking the website, the district's website, and the Specialty Programs website for updated information. But as of right now, um, we do not know if we will be able to offer the PSAT 8-9 for our eighth graders um, in December. And I, there was also a question about SAT. So for seniors, I would encourage seniors to go onto the College Board website and try to register for the SAT at the closest test center that they have. And then for our juniors, we are still looking at the possibility of doing the SAT school day. Thank you, Adrika, for addressing those questions. I know that's one of the concerns I've seen um, in our question and answer. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Um, as we transition to um, our immersion program, um, Carmen, I'm going to ask you to give us an overview of French immersion at the high school level. Um, and also, once you finish that, if you um, want to just chime in with a few of the responses I know you've been giving in the, the chat box, just with regards to um, parents who do not speak the native lang the language of the immersion program and just the support students are going to receive, um, because I've seen lots of questions about that, and I know you have some supports available. Good evening again. 
The immersion program at the high school level is located at Central High School. Our high school program requires two immersion classes per grade level. These classes will be held live this year. Students have the opportunity to earn the Maryland Seal of Biliteracy by successfully passing the French Government International Delft B1 or B2 exam and the Maryland State English 10 exam. Teachers will have the opportunity to participate in professional development to assist students in gaining higher levels of proficiency in production skills, writing and speaking. And then um, the question that Dr. McDaniel asked was about if they don't speak the native language. Teachers are being asked to hold office hours daily in order to be able to help students and or parents um, and, and assist them in gaining that, um, that knowledge that they need in order to complete assignments. Those assignments should have already been started during direct live instruction. And so if a student hasn't understood that, they will be able to get that in those office hours. In addition to that, like I said, we purchase two additional software pieces that will help with the lower levels um, in order to be able to get the phonics pieces and the beginning reading comprehension. But we also have a distance learning document that's going to be shared by all schools to show what resources we have and what, how, we're, how they're being used and what they're for. Thanks, Dr. McDaniel. Thank you, and Carmen, I know your team has done a lot of work to help to um, help parents settle in and utilize, they know their child's gonna be in immersion this school year, but you'll be surprised how quickly our students are gonna pick up the language, and just like they do when they're face-to-face, -face, they'll have the opportunity to connect with their teachers and master the language um, without your support. We know that many of our, most of our families are not native speakers of our immersion languages, and that's okay. Um, and we're here to provide the support for our students. So thank you for sharing that, Carmen. We're gonna move into our science and technology program. Um, that's at three of our high schools across the district. Good evening again. Yes, the science and technology program is one program that services the entire district through three centers located at Eleanor Roosevelt, Charles Herbert Flowers, and Oxon Hill High School. And the science and tech program, um, very similar to its sister program, the Aerospace Engineering and Aviation Technology Program, is looking to innovate many different ways to help our students learn about STEM. Um, one of those ways is the use of GoPros um, in um, experimentation um, in science and engineering, and also the um, partnership with our um, outside partners, college um, schools, Goucher University of Maryland, um, Morgan State, and Bowie um, to help the students um, with um, peer-to-peer and mentor-to-peer tutoring um, sessions. In addition, our coordinators will be meeting with the students as well as our teachers um, through office hours to provide them with feedback and next steps for their career and for their secondary um, pursuits. Again, we are looking at um, different software to, that is compatible with the Chromebook um, and will not take up too much space on the Chromebook. And so we are currently at that time, at this time, looking at um, different um, web-based programs that our students can use for their architecture courses and our engineering drafting and graphics. But just like the students in the aerospace course, it includes that students may use Onscape, um, which is a web-based um, um, similar to a SolidWorks course that we use in the district. Lastly, um, our students in internship, we are working very closely to give them as um, tangible an experience as possible by still pairing them up with mentors and having them um, go through the process of understanding what the career that they are um, observing is about. Um, and we are allowing the use for students in research practicum to utilize secondary data um, this year as they write their papers. Any other questions, please don't hesitate to put in the question box. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Martin Lateef, um, for sharing. 
And next, we're going to hear from our career and technical education programs, which are housed in every high school in Prince George's County Public Schools and lots of program options um, that many of your students are participating in. Hi, right, good evening, everyone. Um, so in the field, in the area of um, career and technical education, we offer programs that cover um, construction development and management, business management, finance, consumer services, hospitality and tourism, uh, manufacturing, engineering, technology, environmental, agriculture, and natural resources, health and biosciences, transportation technology, and information technology. Um, in addition to all of those things, we also um, participate and supervise the adolescent single uh, parent program. So in terms of, as most of you know, CTE is a very hands-on um, su subject matter where we normally have um, students in the classrooms working on a lot, doing a lot of experiential learning. Um, as we are virtual, we have partnered with a lot of our vendors and business partners to create a, as many simulation um, opportunities as possible so that we're able to um, engage our students in a virtual manner. As has been said previously, um, our courses will be synchronous and asynchronous, so students and parents will have an opportunity to go back and review um, any of the items that are not readily available or for your um, for your review at a later time. We have also worked to ensure that um, all internships and work-based learning can also be counted towards credit for students towards their graduation and program completion as approved through the Maryland State Department of Education. Um, students will be following their regular schedule, so in some cases they'll be single, single block or double block, um, but the idea is that students will still have access or the opportunity to experience the same amount of seat hours and training time to complete all of their programs. Um, if you have any more questions or, or require any more specificity, um, please um, feel free to put it in the chat or you can definitely go to our website, which is linked um, at the bottom of this slide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cadet. Um, we're going to move into our last high school program, which is visual and performing arts. Um, before we do that, I just uh, want to address one of the a question I saw a few times in the chat regarding the um, implementation of IEPs for the school year. Um, and so just to let you all know, there is another town hall focused on special education um, tomorrow that you can check out to get more information about the implementation of IEP. Now I'll turn it over to um, Lee Gibbs. Good evening again. Uh, we have a visual and performing arts program at Northwestern High School as well as at Suitland High School. Uh, the students will meet with their teachers virtually in real time to receive direct instruction. They will also have access to pre-recorded as well as recorded lessons for small group and independent assignments and or projects. Uh, students and teachers will also have access to online textbooks and resources. Virtual exhibits, performances, and festivals will more than likely still be taking place, uh, of course, virtually. However, the focus will be mostly on the individual and small group instruction. VPA student schedules uh, will include an additional period, what we call fifth period, uh, dedicated to the study and study of, excuse me, and focus on their designated art form in addition to their normal classwork for the day. Uh, VPA applied lesson teachers, meaning those teachers who we, we bring in specifically for the private and small group instructions for mostly our voice and instrumental students, uh, will be maintained to make sure that we do keep up with the continuity of a robust, robust learning environment, making it as similar to what we currently have in the school system as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Um, I'm going, we have some time left, so that will give us an opportunity to address um, some of the questions that are in the chat as we, uh, the question and answer chat, as we continue to um, respond. 
But uh, before, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Teresa Jackson, our tag supervisor, just to address some of the questions that she's been receiving. I um, want to encourage you all to stay up to date with the information that um, we'll be sending out um, regarding uh, a virtual instruction in general, but also our specialty programs. And so you can follow us on Twitter at PGCPS. You can also follow us at PGCPS Specialty. Um, for those of you who are on Twitter, we'll be constantly updating the website with information um, as, as we uh, are developing it and sharing these slides. I know that there was a few questions about the content on the slides, so we'll be sure to post these slides and the recording of this town hall on our, our main website so that you can access it um, at a later time. And also, if there are any specific questions that you have, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm Kia McDaniel at the email address on the screen here um, so that I can answer your question or direct you to the, the person who can answer your question more specifically. Uh, Teresa, I know you had lots of questions uh, about the TAG program, so I want to give you an opportunity just to address um, some of those and um, for our audience. So I think I've answered most of the questions. I have at least one more I have to finish answering. So um, popular topics was, um, even though we were focused on the specialty program at the TAG Center, I had some questions about TRC programs and uh, the pullout programs, which are elementary programs. What does TRC so, stand for? TAG in the regular classroom, we have 30 schools that implement the TRC program. and. Those TRC schools and those TRC classrooms will be implementing gifted best practices, cluster grouping, differentiation, acceleration, using the resources that we have secured for them. So that, that expectation is, is still the same. Um, our pullout program will look very different than typical because our pullout program is historically a very hands-on, multifaceted, interdisciplinary curriculum. With a virtual space, we have actually adopted two new virtual learning platforms. Uh, Renzulli Learning and First in Math will be the two uh, platforms that we're using with that curriculum. And that information we'll be providing the teachers and the, uh, with professional development. The other big question is, are we doing testing and screening this year? So historically, we test first and third graders universally. For, for TAG identification and services. At, right now, today, we're not able to answer the question on how we're gonna do that and what that timeline is going to look like. It's still an expectation that we do it. Um, we just have to work out all the fine details in this virtual learning space, what we can and cannot do. So my team is working on it with the testing office. We are dedicated to figuring this out. And as soon as we have any information, it will go up on our website, in our, on our Twitter account. We will be sharing it widely. Um, the other common question, I had a couple about twice exceptional. So I would encourage parents of any twice exceptional students, whether they're in elementary, middle, high school, if you um, just have questions, feel free to email me directly. Uh, my email is tjackson at pgcps.org. Um, I will help you navigate what, you, what needs to be navigated. Um, the last popular question was really about the timeline of lottery. And um, I can answer the historical. Uh, historically, we have the application for the lottery comes out the beginning of January. The deadline is March 12th. Um, I, at this point, I don't know if that calendar is going to change. It's not overseen by the TAG office per se, but um, I'm sure as soon as that information is available, we will make sure that's available on all of our platforms. That hit the big topics, and now I see a few more questions coming in that I should, I should answer, so I'll send it back to Dr. McDaniel. Thank you. Thank you. And um, for those of you who um, want to know more just about our reopening plan, the reopening plan is posted on the main website, um, pgcps.org backslash reopen. Um, and so you can see the information there with draft schedules um, and information. I know there were some questions about um, homework and things of that nature. And so we've outlined 
some, some more details there. Um, I also want to um, give Carmen Henninger an opportunity to just um, share any high level questions you've been answering in the chat um, for the group that you wanted to share from our immersion program. Hello again. Um, most of the questions I've received are about how we, how are parents to support their children when they don't speak the language. And those I'm going to tell you, the work that kids are going to do independently should have been started in the classroom. So students should be able to do that work independently. If they are struggling, please use the office hours. All principals have agreed that all teachers will be having office hours at the end of the day. Um, and our coordinators are available to also help students individually. One more thing that um, we would like to share is that we have still some spaces left at Overlook Spanish Immersion, some at Maya Angelou French Immersion, and some at Cesar Chavez um, for home language of Spanish for kindergarten for this year's lottery. There's a late lottery application. If you are interested or know of somebody who's interested in one of those spots, please reach out to our office at immersion.programs at pgcps.org. We'll happy to share the information on how to um, sign up for the late lottery. Any more questions, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out to our office. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Um, again, if just to keep up with um, all of the updates coming out, um, please feel free to follow us on Twitter, our school district at PGCPS, and we also have uh, a, a separate Twitter for our specialty programs for things specific to our specialty programs. You can um, see us on Twitter at PGCPS specialty. Um, also, information will continuously be updated on our web, our website, www.pgcps.org. And if there are specific questions um, that didn't get answered this evening, um, feel free to reach out to me, Kia McDaniel, um, via email. My email address is um, on, on the screen. Um, so we're going to continue to answer your questions for a few more minutes that are in the chat box, but I do want to take this opportunity to thank our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Kyra Libby, for her support in putting this together, um, and Raven Hill, who's our Communications Officer, in getting the word out about this event. We were so excited to see so many of you register for this event to learn about what virtual instruction is going to um, look like for our students. Um, a very special thank you to Monica Jenkins, who is our technology support for this event and making sure that we were able to communicate with you all and get the information out to you in a timely manner. And um, Dr. Gladys Whitehead, who is the Director of Early Learning, um, who helped us pull all of all this information together. So we will be in the chat for a few more minutes um, and I'll keep this last slide up so that you can jot down the email address or um, our Twitter, Twitter handle. Um, and we are excited about starting this school year in a virtual format to continue to meet our students um, in what we need to do. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Libby. Thank you, Dr. McDaniel. I see a few questions about AVID. So I just wanted Ms. Hall to come back on to uh, share AVID and distance learning for this school year. Hi, thank you, Dr. Libby. So for our AVID program, um, those students who are enrolled in the AVID elective class will receive instruction from their AVID elective teacher using one of the platform, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. Um, they will still receive instruction in the Wicker strategies. We are working with um, getting them some training and supporting them with digital tools such as Nearpod and Peer Deck that they can use to enhance their lessons to ensure that those um, Virtual experiences are engaging for the students, so um, students should be on the lookout for information from their elective teacher or how they would access um, 
the classes once the school year begins. But um, or so if you are on here and you have a child who is in the AVID program or at an AVID school, um, they should know if they've received their schedule, if they are going to be in the AVID elective class this year, if they applied and were accepted into the AVID elective class at their school, they should um, have received that information. But the AVID students will still continue to receive that virtual instruction from their teacher. And we are working with them to plan um, some virtual college tours so the students still get that experience as well, as well as some other um, college and career ready virtual experiences so that students continue to receive those experiences um, as well. Thank you. And I think we have another update also from our immersion office, um, just some information that was shared in the chat, but they wanted to share with everyone as well. So Carmen, did you, I want to come back on and give you another update. I, I shared that we had spaces available still. Thank you, Dr. McDaniel. And, and what programs, just in case people didn't get that, um, the message that the lottery is available for which school? The late lottery is available for Maya Angelou, um, French Immersion, Overlook, Spanish Immersion, and Cesar Chavez, Dual Immersion, Dual Spanish Immersion for native Spanish speakers only for kindergarten. Thank you. So that information um, regarding the late lottery for both immersion and tag um, who have spaces in their programs is available on our website as well. If uh, you have another child who in, in several grades at various grades um, at several schools in various grades that they may also apply for that lottery or if you know someone um, within the district, um, please spread the word that though that late lottery is currently open. And Dr. McDaniel, we have several questions about the wait list. And I know the wait list varies for different programs, but if you can give a general overview and then any upcoming, upcoming information on our specialty showcases that we usually have every year. Thank you. Sure. So regarding the wait list, um, so schools our plate students are still registering in our programs, and if there is space available, um, students are con families are contacted right away and given a grace period to um, indicate they if they would like to accept a seat in the wait list. So there are still opportunities, as I mentioned, with the, the running the late lottery, even with our, our wait list to get into some of our programs as students either do not re-enroll or they accept seats in other programs. So please uh, check your email and um, check your voicemail messages um, because you may be hearing from uh, people in specialty programs regarding that. Um, and with regards to our specialty showcase, we're in the process of planning a virtual specialty showcase um, for obviously for social distancing purposes, we're not gonna be able to have our in-person specialty showcase, but we are looking at different options for virtual specialty showcase this fall to showcase all of our specialty programs so that students and families who are not already in specialty programs um, or have other children entering specialty programs can learn more information about our, our programs and the deadlines for application and, and the criteria for entrance. So we are definitely in the planning stages for those things and um, you will definitely you will hear more information in the fall. So please also check out our website. They connected with us via Twitter um, to get that information um, so that you can have those updates in a timely manner. So again, thank you all for joining us this evening for this first um, specialty town hall. We'll be on just a few more minutes. I'm answering questions in the chat. Um, but again, feel free to follow us on Twitter at the handles you see on the screen. And also feel free to reach out by email if there are any individual questions. If you um, or you know someone who, if you didn't uh, participate in this entire town hall or you want to revisit it, it will be posted on our website um, in a few days. And you'll also have access to the slides. So that information will be available on our website as well. So thank you for joining us this evening.